2020 BMW IBSF Men's Skeleton World Championships from Altenburg in Germany in the mountain region of Saxony, close to the Czech Republic border. We are at one of the toughest tracks on the planet and the weather may not be helping today as we get into the second day of action for the Men's Skeleton Competition. Welcome back, everybody. Martin Haven and John Morgan here waiting for 31 sleds to take on snowy weather and one of the most difficult tracks in the business. And John, what an interesting interesting leaderboard we've got after day one. Yeah, Axel Young, he was the leader at the end of the first run. He won a, the first event of the season in Lake Placid. Uh, he was the top ranked German uh, in the field and he was the favorite. So he comes down and he's the leader, only 500s off the track record. But next up, all of a sudden, Alexander Gastner, he comes down in the uh, in the first heat and he posts the third best time, but he comes down and posts the track record in the second heat. And everybody was like, wow. And uh, so we thought, no problem, Gaster's in the lead. But then the next guy comes down, Germans are happy because the next German who comes down, Christoph Gro or Christopher Grothier, he's surprisingly does the same thing. He blows away the track record and they lowered it by 30 hundredths and he's the leader. So they shuffled up the one, two, and three after the first heat. Grothier at first, Gaster second, Young third, but don't count out the rest of the field, Martin. It's a four-heat race. Yeah, Martin Stukos moved closer to the leaders in heats two yesterday, but Sombin Young nine tenths away, and Felix Keisinger 98 hundreds out of the lead. They are going to need some kind of help from the weather or for those in front to give places away. The Germans were one, two, three in the first heat. They're one, two, three after two heats, but the order, as you said, has been shuffled around. And the most recent German winner on this track, Christopher Grothair, who won the World Cup race here three years ago, is perhaps the surprise of the field, the overnight leader. Well, 31 sleds started heat two, and Amir Bell had to pull out after the first heat. He tore a hamstring, so 31 sleds remain. And the last of our four runners going down the track at the moment, just to make sure the timing equipment is all A-OK. -okay. And the reigning world champion, six-time world champion Martin Stukors, is perhaps the only man who might put a real fly in the ointment. There's Axel Jung, local hero. It's his home track. And as you say, John, led off the first heat, but a really loose run in the second heat. Three Germans were only covered by 600s after the first heat. Now Axel Jung is 3,500s off the lead. He needs a bit of a miracle here in heat three. So here is our leaderboard and our start order for the third heat. We start with the guy who led overnight going first and the 31st placed athlete Amedeo Banias from Italy will go off in 31st place. And then the field will be cut to the fastest 20. And for the fourth heat, we go 20 down to one with the leader going last. And on a snowy day, that's not necessarily any kind of advantage, may end up being a major handicap. We'll have to wait and see exactly what the weather does. So far, it's been on and off, on and off, little light snow, bit of wind, some, none. It's a lottery. Well, it's not a lottery for this guy. He controls his own destiny, Christoph, Christoph Grothier. And, you know, he's he's been in and out of the Swiss lineup or yeah. the German lineup for most of the year. And, Didn't uh, make the World Cup, Cup squad, squad at all this year. He's not started a senior level race. He was beaten out by Felix Keisinger in preseason and Christmas trials. But Grothair, two of his three World Cup medals in his career have come on this track. Slowest start of the three so far, five. 506. In golf tournaments, you have four days of competition. In the Olympics and World Championships of Bob and Skeleton, you have four heats. In golf, they call the third day the moving day. Here in Bobsled and Skeleton, we call the third heat moving heat. This is where you just want to position yourself to win a medal for the fourth run. It's been an hour since the women's first day of action completed. They have swept the track. Grote here has the best conditions. Whoa, big speed. Very big speed. He was just in flying form yesterday on a snowy Saturday, Friday even. Is he going to get close to the track record from the first day? It's a 55-86. Oh, he's flying. Is this is great speed. speed. Can't tell, Martin, if it's going to be... 20 kilometers an hour in the first heat. No, way off. He's it's still a great run, 56, so he's 70 hundredths off the track record. So we're right. dealing with a slower track. 
The question is, how much slower and how much slower was he compared to those chasing from behind? He does not have much of a margin. He's not got a huge smile on his face, but Chris doesn't rarely know. does. He, he doesn't know either. No, you're right. Look at oh, the little Ooh. slip there. Little, look, that yeah. wasn't, look at I don't like that. A little slip of the ankle on the penultimate step. And but he was he 100 loaded. slower than his other uh, two heats, 505. Well, here he comes. Little, this is perfect here. Straight down the middle. That's where you want to be to avoid the snow. Three quarters of a second slower All than right. he went in the second run I yesterday. wonder how he slept. I wonder how Alexander Gastner slept. Gastner actually ended up second of the Germans in the World Cup rankings at the end of the season. Silver medal in Winterberg, his highlight. But he's had a strong and consistent season. He is 900s out of an overnight lead. This could be huge, Gassner. 512. 12. That's uh, so way they, off. That's 400s off his start. Um, so, yeah, 800s off his second, second start. start. There'll be a little bit of snow blowing in and out. Shouldn't be too much of a drama for the 30-year-old. Uh, what we call the Scorpion 4-5 combination. He's not too bad. Two tenths down. But he was like uh, magic on the bottom part of the track. But yeah. so was his teammate. Grothier just came down. 20 hundreds. He shouldn't let that get farther out. 21. Tiny Stop the bleeding. Skid faster. Best speed. He's going to eat back into this uh, 21 hundreds deficit now. Half a kilometer an hour. Quicker. 15. Here he comes. Quicker again. Oh, Still half a K up. Can this could come back down to 900s as it was before. 12. This is going right to the 100. Top speed. Best speed. Single Only digits. a fraction quicker than Grote here. Where is he going to be? 700s. He's close by 200s of a second. We have a race on our hands. 50, wow. 6.54, the fastest time of the run with the slower start. 4,500 meters of ice, and there are seven hundreds of a second between them. That's ridiculous. Great run from Alexander Gassner. Critically, he keeps Grote here within reach. Seventh of the world championships in, in last year in Whistler. Tiny little drift all the way yeah, down the straight. Way down. The runners aren't quite parallel. He's not but... steering away. No. Here, this is where he started the motor. He had the best speeds on the exit of Kreisel, exit of 14, and in the finish. Just but down, he only picked up 200s, though. Down that tiny little bit of snow, that could have been what separated him from the lead. Now, what about Axel Jung? Loads and loads of orange vests here. Lots of support for the man from Dresden, just around an hour's drive away from here, the capital of Saxony. Best this is starter. his home track. 99 and 96 yesterday. If he wants to make a move, he's going to need a five flat or better start. He is going to have to have a good start. There's the five flat. So but what also, should accomplish there? He has got to have an unbelievable drive. I think if he gets through four or five clean coming up right here, he's got a chance to make a statement run. Yes. And he, he's got to get it down. A, Oh, he's 2,400. It's back. Yeah. He had problems up here in the second run. I'm not sure I was I what happened there. Too keen on his exit from corner four and a little late off corner nine. Drift this is like too. his but second heat. 1,900 back. Second best speed. Too many mistakes creeping in. 1,500 back. Coming back down now, though. He was 3,500 behind at the start of the run, don't forget. Doesn't this like is a better run. He's going to close to within a tenth of the line, maybe. I don't know. I think he fell away a little bit. 22. How close does he get? 20. Two tenths back. Yeah, so he didn't really improve him. Yeah, but he closed he 15 hundreds on the Christopher Grote Yeah, he came back. But Martin, I didn't like his uh, entrance into 13. Looks like he put his foot out. Four and, to uh, five as well. He hit the take on take to five on. quite hard. He did have the best. But, you know, he, when you have the best start like he has over yeah. his teammates, he should uh, improve. Excellent nine. Watch the sled drift. Toe. Yeah. Toe out. Just got to drag it away from the wall, get it back now on line for the Kreisel. He's coming over to try and get on the best take big, on spot. Big high Watch this here. Top. Yeah. Watch the right foot here. Yep. Left foot. See that? He's, he's trying to set himself up for 13. Same as yesterday. Skidding in there. Yeah. Okay, one more to go. Three Germans in the hunt. 
Does anybody what, that needs a big heat is what this about, guy right yeah, here? Our world champion, Martin Stukos. And he's going to start better than anybody so far. He started 491 yesterday in the second run. If he wants to make a statement, he's going to need a 491, 492. Had five straight wins on this track up to three years ago. There's 96. Oh, that's not the Martin Dukars we're used to. But, of course, he's also 35 years old. Now let's see if he can get through 4-5 without incident, sort of. But he can't be more than 30. Oh, he's 3,800 back. He might get it down in the teens. And he needs to get it down in the teens to challenge at least for a podium. Well, don't forget, 5,200 back overnight. That was oh, the gap's come out, though. He's gone from 38 he's to 47 back. Speed. Doesn't have it. No. This, this is, is not going to be a winning a. day for Martin Stukos. If I'm a German coach, I'm smiling at what I'm looking at right here. That's not perfect. 5,400. So now we're talking about him falling further back. Wow, he's a half second Ooh, down. More. Not a great run Whoa. across the line. Look at this. So our uh, the Superman of Skeleton, the World Cup leader from this year, six-time world champion. I don't think we're going to see any podium. Well, it was either Martins or the weather that was going to break up the German domination of the podium, and I don't think it's going to be Martins. No, the Germans That's showed that they're wired into this track and the the rest of the countries, this was the hope to get in there and split up that podium. But this, he just didn't have it all the way down the track, yep. Martin. Well, from the that, start, which 500 slower. Mistakes from five. Martin's do cause. It's so unusual. Well, he is 35. Well, he is also human. Occasionally, you can be not perfect. And Martins didn't have the greatest run there. So what about Sun Bin Young, our Olympic champion from Prong Chang, finished in bronze medal position last year in Whistler. He's light years away too. Silver medalist in the Worlds in Innsbruck. But he has not had a world championship win. Coach Richard Bromley behind said they're going to try something very radical today. They're not going to catch on a normal sled, so they're just going to throw it all up in the air. Well, the start. Not his best. 495 was the yesterday. Was the start track's a little slower than yesterday. Well, Yun neatly out of four. Good transition into corner five. He's he was 8900s back over the overnight. It's down to 72. That's relative to the start, but good exit out of nine. 80. So he's almost stopped the bleeding. Fourth, better speed than Dukars. They're working for the future today, Richard Bromley said. Medals aren't going to come our way. Let's try something radical. Fifth best speed, so I think he's going to have all he can do to beat Dukars. So we have not seen anything other than chalk here in this heat. Well, this is often the problem with the way that the third heat runs. He runs. He gets the best uh, ice and accelerates away. 9900s back. When was the last time Sun Bin Young was nine tenths back off the lead in any third heat? In the anywhere? third heat. 56 66. That was a tenth slower than leader Christopher Grothead just on that one run. But he was much closer than he was yesterday. Yeah. Still, though. Wow. Yeah, second heat yesterday, only eighth fastest in the field. Again, watching the cry. So look at Grote here with the control. Jun is just letting the sled fly. He closes a little bit there. Look, you see the overlap, but he's covering so much extra ice. So, Sumbin Jung of Korea, one more run to go. Germany, one, two, three. Grote here, Gassner, local hero, Jung. Five sleds down in our field of 31 in the Men's Skeleton World Championships in Altenburg, Germany. Here's the junior world champion, Felix Keisinger. He was in seventh place after the first heat, moved up one into sixth position. It's pretty disappointing yesterday, Martin. We thought he'd be up there challenging for a podium well, spot. He hopes so, too. He's been very quick this best season. Best start of the, of the day. Yeah, best start of the competition. competition. So 491 was the best yesterday. Yeah, 490, in fact, Alexander Chechikov. He's coming up, but uh, he just didn't have it. Let's watch him here in the Albatross, that we call 4-5, the Scorpion section of the track. And he's, you know, got a chance to make a move on Young. He could move up a yeah. little bit. 
88, he's fourth best speed of the six sleds so far. Three medals this season. He's come from behind on a bad first heat in a good second heat every single time. Four holding, fastest. Holding himself. Eight, 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 eight. is ahead of Sylvinian on the split. The best speed of anybody we've seen so far. And this is, is he what we pick expect out of him. The Olympic champion. Uh, he got he second does. best time of no. the run. Yes, he has. Whoa. We could have one, two, three, four before we're done. Dukars has got 15 hundredths there. 56-46. He beat yep. Dukars by 20 hundredths. Yep, only Axel Junk, five hundredths of a second quicker. This is what Kaishinger did. I asked him in training, are you just going to ruin the first heat and then three good ones, or do you have to mess up the first heat on each day? And he laughed. So yeah, that was he a didn't good first heat miss today. Up. So that's another heat, too. This is what he's got to do. More if heat. If he does teams. that again in the second run, it'll be a one, two, three, four German yep. podium. Right. And that's. And how far is. Okay. 1800s or 1700s? No, he's 68 hundreds out of the look medals, but he's that. got great speed. Well, that's what we expect out of him yesterday. Yep. We didn't think it was it's the Grothier first heat. or Gassner. We thought he was going to be up there in the challenge. Well, last uh, this year, his first in the world champ in the World Cup, and uh, he needs to just get those first heats together. Thomas Dukors of Latvia next up, and Dukors, multiple medalist in the World Championships. 5, 15, 16, probably the norm with the track the way it is. There's last, 13. It's not bad for him. Last medal here for Thomas Silva in 2014-15. The family have had a couple of 1-2 results here. Martin's ahead of Thomas. They've had a lot of 1-2 results in the, the two of their careers. Yeah, most recent was last weekend in Segulda in Latvia, their home track. It's their first, I think, for over two and a half seasons. Thomas was the first athlete of the Dukars brothers. We saw at the first race we did in Segulda. 2003, he went from 13th to first to win the gold. And look good at speed. Best speed. Yeah. 111 6, very good speed. Big height on the second pressure, but he nails the exit. Fifth best speed, not bad. Remember, he's coming off a deficient start, too. So. 131 back, sixth best speed. So he's lost his speed. Yeah. Exit of Kreisel. And to the line with a 56 88. Very chalk. Yeah. 138 back. Eight fastest in the first run, six fastest in the second to claw his way ahead of Alexander Tretikov. Yeah, he and lost Nikita to, you know, yeah. to the Koreans. Gaps opened up a lot there. Yon is, he was better than Yon at the Chrysler, then he lost all his time. Yep. So this is where the time went away. Look at Dukars was fifth. Wasn't bad, but all of a sudden he went from third, fifth best speed until the seventh. Lots of waves in the Chrysler, trying to let the sled fly, but the speed wasn't there to start with. Alexander Tretikov, one of four athletes who started this race, who competed in the Worlds in Altenburg in 2008. The Dukors brothers and Ander Mirambel were the others, and uh, having to pull out with an injury. Alexander Tretikov in the second heat, starting 200s quicker than he did in 2008 when he was 12 years younger. 492, that was his fastest start 12 years ago. But Martin, this, this you know, world champion guy right here, he couldn't make it through curve four, five coming up right here. Yeah. See if he's learned his lesson overnight. Sort of, his foot still came out a little bit, but it was way better than the second heat yesterday. That's not good. No. Boy, it was just, this is just not the guy we're used to seeing. And he's had plenty of experience on this track. He's won on this track. Won here last year. It's not like he's forgotten how to drive it. Only eighth fastest at the Chrysler. He's our eighth sled, so that makes him the slowest man down the track so far. With the best start. It's just not happening. The Snyder sled, for some reason, is not working for him. Marina Gilardoni of Switzerland, also on a slide at Snyder sled, leads the women's race. So, sixth best time of the run. Eighth overall still. He's 1100 still down at Thomas Dukars. 56.77 is exactly the same time that Martin Dukars produced in his third heat. So the two of them are still separated by not a hair's breadth. Well, after all these years, he's picked up about 1100s on. Uh, uh, Thomas Dukars, but that's not the Russian rocket. It is at the start. Yeah. He still has the best start, but 
He, watch this. He, they show him coming out of this curve. He taps. Watch this. Yeah, definitely. This is not it's a four, clean five. exit. You know, that's four, five. And then he's late here. Look at him. Look at the shoulders trying to get off yeah. the curve earlier than he did. And that's just look pretty. Mm, can't it's, say the drift back to the en right. Energy going sideways that you have to fight to straighten the sled up. Hitting before 15 isn't helpful. Helpful in the. He's uh -huh. looking at he's looking at all the replay just like us. Nikita Chegibov of Russia. Chegibov off the back of a silver medal in last year's World Championships. He's had a pretty mediocre season and a 5-10 start. That's his worst of the competition. Now the start track is not quite as quick as it was yesterday. That bronze medal here last year. But he's giving away 1800s to a man who's 12 years older than him. Yeah, and his start's not what it was when he won the silver medal in Korea two years ago. Yeah. The Olympics. You know, it's, he's got a baby now. He's no longer the young gun. He's, you know, <laughs> maybe going through a midlife crisis with his skeleton sport. Well, let's see how he fares at the bottom of the track. He's our ninth slider. He has got the lowest speed so far. Now, the sun coming out on the track is not necessarily helping much either. Still the lowest speed. Top speed there is 118.9, three kilometers an hour down. Now, it's not the same guy, 57.18. Martin, he just went 6,800, 6,900 slow. Yeah. Dennis well, the track is not as fast for sure, but don't forget, Ali, uh, Christopher Grothair, the leader, went seven tenths slower on his first trip today than he did on his second trip yesterday, which is the one that got him the lead. So I stand corrected. So uh, who knows? Hard to read this, isn't it? But they were behind after two runs. It's hardly a surprise to see them falling further behind the leader after three. The only person who's made a big move is Kessinger. Yeah. With the second best time of the run coming, six guy down the track. He does that again, he will move up. I don't know if he has a chance to win a medal. He's going to need one of those top three German sleds to fall to. Well, who knows what might yet happen. Next up in top ten position after the first day's action, sled being held by Katsuhiro Koshi, one of the seven coaches here who raced in the 2008 Worlds in Altenburg, is Kim Ji Su of Korea. Teammate Yun was in fifth, now being pushed down to sixth position. Start, well, good start. This is a pretty good result for him. He's been moving up the leaderboard all year. 25 years old, he's never had an official IBSF race on this track, so he's relatively inexperienced. Finished in 15th place, 14th place in Whistler last year. So this is a step forward in his world championship abilities, particularly given that he knew Whistler and he doesn't know this place. Best finish, a fifth in Eagles this year, which very tactical track, but he's a good starter. So in Eagles, if he got a good start, you have a chance to finish near the podium. Decent looking exit from the Kreisel, top 10 speed. But, you know, personal best, you come out here, you want to do better than the last time you were here, especially in a world championship. And he's on that pace now to finish top 10. All right. Tenth man and the uh, only the 10th fastest run, 57, oh no, 57.51. Uh, so, yeah, nobody slower so far. Tenth at the start, 10th speed all the way down. Is that enough to keep him in the top 10? Well, it's going to be a tough battle. Real late there, and of course yeah. he comes over and crushes the wall and does the scorpion oh. trick. I just, I, I can't ever look at that and think anything other than ouch. But then my lower back doesn't need any more stimulation like that. There's uh, Kim Ji Soo, 10th place after the third heat so far of the Men's Skeleton World Championships as Christopher Grothair has a slender lead. Oh, snow overnight. Fastest 10 sleds in the Men's Skeleton World Championships already down in heat three of four. Tight battle between two Asian nations for a top 10 spot. Kim Ji Soo of Korea was 200s ahead of Yan Wen Gang of China. The young Chinese, their top slider in the first heat. Well, he was sixth at the end of the first heat. We were uh, like looking at each other, like, where did yeah. this guy come from? Really upset with himself when this uh, after his second heat where he fell the tenth and 
Just 22 years old. He's not raced on this track before except for one Europa Cup weekend, so limited in track knowledge. Talked to one of his coaches and said that uh, he's, he's very competitive, very knows where he is. He's not content to uh, be in 10th place. Better speed than Kim Jisoo of Korea. Don't forget, the gap was only a couple of hundreds between them. Haven't had too much movement here on the moving day of the he's, skeleton race. He's pulled ahead of Kim. He's in the top 10 now. This is a good recovery from Yang Wenggang of China. 10th best time of the run. And he does move ahead of Kim. Yep. By he a lot. Quarter Boy, of a second he, over he Kim. Him. And so uh, he's some way behind Nikita Tregibov, who's ninth at the moment. But well, remember, Kim crushed the wall yep. in four to five, and he got penalized big time. So a year ago in Whistler, he was 20th. Right now, going into the final heat, he'll be in the top 10. That's the kind of progress that he wants to see. Well, the Chinese are on a huge learning curve in the sliding sports of bobsled and skeleton. Don't know how the world they're doing in luge. Luge, it takes a little longer to adapt to that sport. But here in Skeleton and Bobsled, they're doing good in all the disciplines. Well, like you keep saying, a lot of these kids start in Luge because you can start that when you're three, four, five, six. You can't start in Skeleton until you're 14. Okay, next up is Matt Weston, the young shock of the British team here. Made one World Cup start in Samaritz. That was due to be a one-off. Now finds himself in the World Championships and trying to battle into the top 10. He was 23 hundreds out of 10th after two heats. 5-10 getaway. That's a good start. Many, one of many rugby players in the field. Did pretty good yesterday, Martin. You know, yep. starts were average, but uh, pretty good speed down the track for somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience. Fifth in the junior worlds, he's 22 years old. This is his third year of sliding only, his first world championship appearance. Fourth in Eagles earlier this year, his best finish of his career. And did race here in the Europa Cup earlier in the season. Little drift out wide from the Kreisel. Only the 12th best speed, though. So he's not yet caught Kim Jisoo of Korea. He'll be within a tenth or so, just losing a little more speed at the line. But a great opportunity to start the World Championships. 57-7-2, drops a little behind Jim, uh, Kim Jisoo again. One over, one, one over one second, excuse me, yep. from the time yesterday. So three quarters of a second is the norm. He's been over one second slower, but of yep. course, his first World Championships, right? Yep. And so, uh, experience. Only a third year of sliding. Well, pretty good starter. Yeah, a bit more experience on these tracks, a bit more experience of ice generally will definitely help with that. See the nose of the sled going down there before he wanted it to. Get a big drift going onto the Chrysler. That's a scary place to start losing control. You know, we talk about races within races, Martin. Well, here's our yeah. Westcott at the bottom, and next, up top Thanks you got Marcus Wyatt, who's yeah. only 200s behind his teammate, and this guy's got one of the best starts in the field. 27 years old, his second World Championships, finished in 12th place last year in Whistler. He was 13th overnight with a teammate in 12th, as you said, just 200 separating them. Very good start technique, 497. Awesome start. Yeah, that's, that's a huge good. start for him, and that puts him immediately ahead of his teammate Matt Weston. So he's now got to carry this 1500 meters to and the here line. Here comes, here comes the. If he gets through here, he could catch his teammate. In fact, go by him by a couple yeah. tenths. That looked better, didn't it? Yeah. He's already up to 11th ahead of Matt Weston. Personal fact, best. That's all you want to do, and race within a race, which means racing against your teammates. And emerge as British number one. Well, right now, he's also ahead of Kim Ji Su, so his target is Yang Wenggang of China and the top 10. He is in 10th place. Nice this is speed. a good run from Marcus Wyatt. More speed at the bottom than he had yesterday. Pretty good cross over there, too. 10th best speed here. This is a good run. He's still going to be in the top 10. He's going to pick off Matt Weston, Kim Ji Su, and Yang Wenggang. 10th best time of the run. 10th of the line. That's They're a good gonna recovery. They're going to be happy with that. Yes. He's up into the 10th position. Awesome. And he's uh, two tenths down to Tregobov. Wow. He's got some names right in front of him. Yeah. Both Russians. Best result in World Cup racing here. Eighth place last season. His 
12th place in Whistler, his best world championship result, but a big start for Marcus Wyatt. Look at the speed. Now, that's the one thing is to get the good start at 50 meters, but the other thing is get on your yeah. sled, and they measure that speed around the first curve. So there's a combination of, of leg drive and power, and then get on the sled with a cat-like movement. Don't one alter the speed at all. One more of those. One yeah, good. one more, more good one. There you go. You. So a few British fans out with the crowd in all weathers here. Next stop for Russia is Yevgeny Rukoshev made his World Cup debut this season. Youth Olympic champion in Lillehammer 2016 in boys skeleton. Now 20 years old, making his World Championship debut. 20 years old. Yeah, you remember that, right? Yeah. Boy, there's a lot of youth. We saw four females this morning, 19 years old in the competition. Yeah, That's absolutely. the youngest field I've ever seen in women's skeleton. And here in men's skeleton, there's a lot of 20-year-olds like this. Well, Rukoshev needs more speed at the start. He's only sort of 18th, 20th fastest starter, but he does know how to drive. 14th place overnight. He was a 10th behind Marcus Wyatt. So if he matches the British slider for pace, he too could pick up a couple of spots. Only the 13th best speed into the Chrysler, though. Saw him steering hard with the right knee. Oh, really high Ooh, there. Look at the speed, though. Seventh fastest. Now it's starting to run. slide a little out of control. Yeah, you got too much of curve 12. Yeah. From the seventh speed to the 14th speed, and that's become the, the snake. But he has picked off Matt Weston at the line. So he is 1700s, uh, 1700s oh, ahead of Matt one. Weston. Yeah. Up one. So, 2,800s behind Kim Ji Soo of Korea. So, Yevgeny Rokishwev and Matt Weston in their first World Championships battling just outside the top 12. And Rokishwev with the advantage. Well, good technique and form. Three times he hit that peak in uh, Kreisel, but uh, the mistake. Right here, too much of this curve. Look how high he gets. You won't see anybody else's runners up there. And up yeah. there, Martin, most likely is frost. And where there's frost, there's a lot of friction. Watch here from 14 to 15. That's pretty good there. Middle of the run. Got bounced away in 13. But one more to go for Rokishwev. Osher's Florian Hour in 15th place overnight. And Flo with uh, Father Christian Hour watching down the track. His coach, Matthias Guggenberger, there at the start. Start 523, pretty much like yesterday. They don't get very good starts. And as I said, their father used to be a good starter when he won the World Championships in Skeleton in 1993. Well, Flooring was 12th in the World Cup field here in last season's race. So he's slipping a little in terms of personal best performances here. 18th place in Whistler's World Championships, though, so he's up on that. Pretty decent exit, 14th fastest speed. Ooh, little tap, not too many taps we see out of Chrysler like and that. And that's taken all his speed away. He's the 15th sled down the track. He's got the lowest velocity at the moment. 13th there, so he's improved a little bit, but tough to be not fast with that catch start time. Weston, he doesn't. He's 2,500s behind Weston, 3,500s behind Weston. So 57.93. That is the slowest run that we've seen so far. It won't be the slowest by the time we're no, done, No, that's Martin. for sure. Well, he was only 200s behind Yevgeny Rukoshev, and Rukoshev is now over half a second clear. So Rukoshev had a good run. It was not good, though, for Florian Hour. Look no, at that, almost that. on his back. When you have a deficient start, and then you do that, and then you go out of sight here in the Chrysler. <laughs> I don't care how fast you start. If you're on your back out of <laughs> corner four into five. You think that's too much friction? Whatever you had, it wasn't there any longer. So not a great run for Florian Hour. Next up for Korea is Jung Seung-gi, but Christopher Grote here is our race leader. 15 sleds down, and the battle now is to remain in the top 20. Yun seung of Korea, 16th after the first heat. And the gap between him and 20th place is around six tenths of a second. And you can give that away in any heat here. Especially 
in this four five combination coming up here he positions himself can he get through not really we had a good start six fastest over the 50 meters but fourth best velocity at the first speed trap however he's given it away in corner five and again, off nine, Pinball Wizard down the straight. Only the 10th best speed into the Chrysler. Big second wave. Let's take a look at the exit. Kind of got it in the middle. He's had a decent year, a couple top 10 finishes. Ninth, ninth, twice. Again, no IBSF races here. He's not even been here in Europa Cup. So he's learning this track fast this season. And that leaves him at a real deficit to those around him. 57-1-7. They like that? They should do. The last sled, Florian Auer, came down 57-9-3. So that is a big improvement he for moved up two spots. Yes. He moved up two spots. He's moved and up he's ahead of Matt Weston Martin, and we're Florian talking Auer. Everybody's three quarters of a second slower over a second slower. After his second heat yesterday, he's only 1,600 slower. Yep and quicker than his first heat, so. He struggled to get through there, but he got through there. Was, that's not too bad. Yeah. Seen, seen a lot worse. Up. We'll you still see a lot, see a lot yeah. worse, yeah. Hey, this is a good run for this young Korean athlete. Good starter, sixth best start. First race on this track, and it's the World Championships. That's in off the high board, isn't it? Next up is the 17th sled in our field of 31. We're getting now down to the danger zone for these athletes to try and get a final heat in the top 20. This is Vladislav Heriskevich of the Ukraine. And Vladislav, just 20 years old, despite which he is in his third World Championships. His father urging him on. Made his debut in Koenigsegg 2017, raced in the Olympics, did Whistler last year as well. Still a little snow falling, but the track is predominantly clear. Martin, we talked about him being one of the bigger guys in the field last year. He yeah. looked like a bobsledder, but he's lost a lot of weight. Well, the, the rate, weight rules have changed. He had to lose weight. His dad was saying he's lost over 20 pounds since last year. Hasn't helped his start times too much. That bad, you know, Again, best start. That's 20 not... years old, you know, 35-year-old Tretikov is still starting as quickly as he did when he was 25, so... There's three tenths behind the top leaders, yep. top start guys. And there's room for improvement. Good form, though. He's definitely a good speed guy. He's already he gets up it. one spot. So he's up to 16th ahead of Florian Auer. 13th at the line. best time of the run. Picks up one spot, and he's right. only 900 out of uh, Matt Weston from GB. Yep, but that puts at least one sled behind him already as he tries yeah. to stay in the top I 20. I gotta believe he's locked into that yep. top 20. He's gonna get a second heat, isn't he? Where did he finish last year? 14th equal in Whistler. So he's a little bit behind. Yeah. But, hey, what's he? 21, 22 years old. 20. 20. Yeah. Jeepers. I know. Look. Good technique here, his feet. I don't like his feet that far outside those lines. But well, comes, from, the, comes from martial arts and weightlifting, so didn't start life as a sprinter. That's the, the technique he's gonna have to learn as well as uh, every bit of the ice sliding. Little skid there over the brow from 13 to 14. So Vladislav Heraskevich moves up a spot and our 18th slider, Craig Thompson of Great Britain. Well, Craig, another fast start to the 22-year-old, another debutante. Could be a 94, 91 yesterday, which was tied for the best start. Raced here a couple of seasons ago, but limited knowledge of the Altenburg track. 4.93 start for him, that's very quick indeed. You can't see the times, we've got them on our commentator information screen. You know, Craig's gotta get through here. Not really, but hey, with the guy who could start the sled like this, I'm impressed. He can, he can really do some damage. Next well, couple of years, he gets more experience. Started sliding in March 2016, so this is the end of his third full season on ice. Up to 17th at the start, out to 18th place now behind Florian Auer of Austria. And his hope, 14th best speed, his hope will be to have a good bottom end and try and guarantee himself a spot in the top 20. But he's gonna, I think he's good enough to get into the top 20. Yeah, there's a decent gap back. He was 3,500 ahead of 21st. 
So 57.54 for Craig Thompson. That's 100 slower than his first heat down the track yesterday. That is very likely to be enough to keep yeah. him in the top 20. Only 34 hundredths off his second heat yesterday. And again, the norm in the top 10 sleds was 7,500. So yep. he, had a, he probably had one of his better heats of the competition. But when you got a start like he's got, you can really improve in the sport quickly. Didn't quite have the control he wanted Here, in the Chrysler. This, this didn't help. This yep. was too tense. Bang. Now he's got a steer to get in under the take on to 15. Craig Thompson, 18th place of 18 sleds. Next up, Sammy Meyer of Austria, 16 hundreds of a second behind Thompson overnight. So the young Austrian, another 20-year-old, trying to fight his way into the field, make sure he stays in the top 20. We'll see his brother tomorrow. Another world championship debutante. So he would much rather do four heats than three. He's still a student and another youngster, 20 years old. Youngest uncle in the field, brother Benny and uh, his wife Elizabeth Meyer with their young son Hendrix here this weekend. So 5.31. But it's his worst start of the three. Yeah. Now remember, uh, the British guy just started, Craig Thompson just started 93, 493. Yeah. So there's a difference of 30 hundreds. All things being equal, he should lose by 90 hundreds at the bottom. It's a three time multiplier effect is what we've always, u always used. But he's a pretty good driver. We saw that yep. yesterday. Came late to the sport from weightlifting, which when you see him at 5'6", uh, or whatever he is, you think, OK. But then, of course, there are all sorts of weight categories in weightlifting. There's only one weight category in skeleton. Boy, he didn't have a lot of the waves there. Really held the line down. But good, good speed, speed. Top 12 speed. what he speed. does. This is how he, you know, can live with the deficient Whoa. start time. Little while there, still Hanging third in in there. faster speed. Is he going to pick up a place? Is he going to get to Craig Thompson of Great Britain? No, he's 1,800 back. Well, it's tough when you have the worst start time of the, of the field. It's tough to overcome anything. Still 2,200s back. So 19th place overnight. So lost 600s more to Thompson. And his. Real battle will be with Nathan Crumpton of American Samoa, who was 21st. Yeah, but he's yeah, to stay Crumpton ahead of had him. a terrible, terrible run. Yeah. In his first heat, second well, Sammy heat, he here, back. Tracking sideways down the straight. Don't want that. And again, wild exit off corner 14 and over the brow into 15. It's about Big consistency. smile on his face. 20th slider in the field after the first two heats. Overnight, Gong Wang Chang of China right on the bubble. He needs a better third run than his second. His first run, he was 14th. The only, only the 23rd best run in heat two. Yeah, and this is a good slider. This was some finished 21st a couple years ago in uh, Codex when we first saw him. He yep. improved at the Olympics. He improved last year. 17th in Whistler. Yeah, and then... Uh, his third heat, he just, second heat yesterday was just a nightmare. It was a horror story, wasn't it? And there's a lot of steering there going on with the toes as well. Coach Billy Schneider is the man who builds the sleds for the Chinese program as well. So he's trying to tailor the sled to the athlete. He's not even the top Chinese in the field. No, nope. 15th best speed though. Let's see if he can hang on in the top 20. Ooh, that's not going to help on that tap. 18th best speed. I don't think this is as bad as his run yesterday, the second heat, but it's he's certainly only, not his best. He's only 14 hundreds ahead of 21st place. He really needs a decent run here. What's he got at the line? 19th, 20th overall. 57, 92. So he went 30, he's 20, done a, 800, 26 hundreds worse. He's done a 57.18, a 57.66, and a 57.92. He is getting steadily slower. That is not what you need. He was the China number one sled in ranking coming in. He was 11th in World Cup points. Yep. Well, we just saw Meyer come down two tenths slower than his first heat. Gung has come down 86 hundreds slower than his first heat. He's still happy. Yeah, well, he's still in the top 20, but we've only had 20 sleds down. Christopher Grothair, the race leader, the battle now is to make the fourth heat. Startfreigabe Zeit, track is clear. 
Nathan Crumpton of American Samoa. 21st after the first heat of the first day's action in the Men's Skeleton World Championships. Martin Haven and John Morgan watching the former US slider trying to break into the top 20. He's got to have a very clean run, John, to overhaul Gung Wing Chang of China. Yeah, he's, you know, if he does what he did in the second heat yesterday, the 15th best time, the first heat was the 23rd best time, and it's because he couldn't get through this four or five coming up right here. If he gets through here, he's got a chance. You heard much the better. big second steer. Yeah. He yeah. knew how crucial, crucial that it was. was. That was much better. But, you know, he was a top 10 slider at the World Championships yeah. in Innsbruck a few years ago. Great track and field athlete from Princeton. Up to 19th place on the split. So he is in the field ahead of Gung of China and Sammy yeah. Meyer. But there's a lot more to come yet oh, yeah. right here. So 11-12. Low, you're real high there. Lee. Good exit off the Chrysler. Still 14th best speed. This is enough for Nathan Crumpton to make the field. Yeah, this is much better. 12th best speed. Here we go. Final couple of corners at the line. He is in, and Gong of China is out. He's 20th at the line. He just dropped 50. behind Sammy Meyer by five wow. hundreds, but he's in the race. Yeah, he blew him away. Beat him by almost six tenths. 57-46. Crumpton wow. is in. Now, does he know it? He's a team of one. Well, there's still people to come, but I don't know if anybody yeah. can catch him. Well, the next sled was 1,400s behind him. There's still potential. There is 26th potential. 26th place in the first heat, 15th place in the second heat, 15th best time in this heat. Yeah. If he had 15, 15, 15, we wouldn't be... Uh... He'd be in the top 50. <laughs> <laughs> but we're good, good at math, aren't we? Yeah. But at too high at 11. Yeah. But... Nathan, nice work. Right now, Nathan Crumpton, American Samoa, in the fourth heat. And perhaps... Andrew Blaser of the USA is the only man who can overhaul him. Beyond this, I think the gaps just get too big. So Blaser, first heat 21st fastest, second heat 22nd fastest. He was right on the cusp in his first ever world championships. Good athlete here, University of Idaho, decathlete from Meriden, Idaho. Just, you know, his first year out on tour, learning all this stuff. Yeah, first World Cup season. Uh, he's thoroughly enjoyed himself. 17th fastest start, so he gives himself a shot. But he needs a brilliant run. Doesn't have huge experience in this Altenburg track, but look at the form. He's holding his line nicely. Is he going to be ahead of Gong? Is he going to get to Nathan Crumpton? Oh, big height in the Chrysler, and he's oh, huge crash off the Chrysler, yeah, so and that's, that is going to hurt. Well, it was go big or go home. And it was. He went for it, and just that know. was a full send from Andrew Blaser. Yeah. No question at all about the effort. You might as well go for it, because yep. there's no more. You ain't going to get anything by being timid. One second, and uh, so. Well, big crash for Andrew Blaser, and uh, that is one that will be in the rollout at the end of the Skeleton World Championships. But give him credit, you know, he knew that he had to do something extraordinary yep. to have a chance. He went for it. Sometimes you eat the bear and sometimes the bear eats you. But uh, his first pressure is good, second too heat. high, then he disappears. When you disappear, you've got problems on the exit. And that's what happened here. Watch this. Up on the exit, some spectacular on pictures. And Look at flying. flying I haven't seen camera. somebody fly like, oh, that's got to hurt. I haven't seen anybody yeah. fly like that since Koenigsee when they put that camera in the chicane. Awesome. Andrew. If you can't win, yeah. be spectacular. You were. <laughs> go hard or go home. He went hard. Full send from Andrew Blaser. Now, what about Dave Gresh Cheshin? We talked about this yesterday. He had a place in the World Championships. He was told by the Canadian Federation he could go if he funded himself. He didn't have the money. Some friends, he does not know who, set up a GoFundMe page. Within 36 hours, they'd found the three and a half grand he needed to come and compete. Yeah, so, for three and a half grand, and I said, I looked at it, it was 3,750 yeah. bucks. On behalf of Dave, his wife, Jess and their baby daughter, those anonymous friends, he would like to thank you from the bottom of his heart. Now, this is the biggest guy in the competition. Yeah. He does look like a bobsled of the Grizz. And, you know. 40 years old and still has the heart of a 20 year old. Oh, big skid for Grizz. 20th best speed into the Chrysler. He had a sixth place finish last year in Calgary on his way to the World Championships. Yeah. He finished 11th 
Still. Still on track. We thought he was going to do better than that. Top 20 speed. Is he going to overhaul Andrew Blaser? I think he will oh, yeah. do by He'll the line. Nothing. Yeah, here Andrew he is. had a little mishap. Yeah. Comes to the line. And his world championships is done. Old. Jess, you can breathe again. <laughs> Grizz makes it down to the line. 22nd spot, head of Andrew Blaser of the USA. Well, it might be interesting to see if he's going to the team competition tomorrow. Well, that's very true. We haven't seen that list yet. That's very true. We won't see that till well, there, tonight. There are only two Canadian men. There are three women. They could enter two teams. So he may be going in the team's competition. The Grizz, look at the helmet. Just saw the skid yeah. reverse on him there. He had to steer the other way immediately. Holding his line from 12. 13. Yeah. <clears throat> nice stuff. Thanks again, everyone, for your support. Back home and everywhere else, love you guys. Love you too, Grizz. One of the uh, one of the big characters in a sport full of big characters. Here's another one. Austin Florian of the USA has uh, done his share of the hard yards this season alongside me in the commentary booth for some of the skeleton races. Good athlete, just not getting the starts he used to. Great skier, uh, Clarkson University Alpine skier, skiing a Whiteface Mountain. All yep. of a sudden, somebody said to him, "Hey, they're." giving you skeleton rides over there on the bob track. He came over and he's emerged the last couple of years as the top uh, U.S. Uh, skeleton athlete. Not here today, Set, but he could pick off his teammate. But uh, just not getting the starts he used to get, Martin. And Second season on the World Cup Tour. Some health problems, back problems. He also pointed to his head. He says, my head hasn't been in the right place for me to compete at this level. Well, you know, uh, uh, what do they say? The game is won or lost in the six inches between the ears, and that's you have to be in the right position physically and mentally. Really high. Oh, big height. Boy. Haven't seen that's the scorpion the highest in the 11 and 12, 12. up that's until now. The, that's the most, you know, his teammate had some kind of exit of Chrysler. He had some kind of exit of the snake curves. So a lot of bobsled crashes is there it is oh, not yeah. easy to get through he is 19 best fastest time down run. 22nd and he lost to his no he picked off his teammate he did one out two spots if he'd started like his that. world cup campaign yeah. with a world championship campaign with the 19th fastest run then the yeah. rest of the race might have been yeah he's a whole a, different ball game and with that with that what he did in 11 12 you know, yep. he, he's, you know, Despite decent starts, that. 22nd and 26th, and then the third heat, he pulls off 19. Yep. With this, he disappears. That's using all of the ice. Yeah. We've and seen nobody, the air as well. We've <laughs> seen nobody do that. So, you know. A, oh, Caleb, what do you think? Caleb, yeah. <laughs> Wasn't like that in my day. <laughs> yes, well, it was. <laughs> it was. The yeah, it was, it was even wilder. Worse. There's Austin Florian of the USA. So next up, the second of our starters in the field from Canada, Kevin Boyer. And again, Boyer in 19th place in the overall World Cup rankings. Best race for him this season, 16th place in Winterberg. Let's see what he can produce again, like Dave Kreschessian may be in the team competition for Canada. 21, wait, 500 slower. So that's Star Trek up there, it's definitely slower. Sun's coming out, though. It's blue sky. Oh, I see off here in the, in the Don't distance. Don't start that again. You made it snow the last time you mentioned that. Oh, four to five. Not great for Kevin. Uh, Kevin's, you know, from Edmonton. Hockey player guy. Connor McDavid is his favorite. Investigative journalist yeah. as well. Yeah. His day yeah, job. That? I asked him about that a little bit. Oh, don't disappear. He's got four waves, but he gets out of it. Yeah. Gets the exit he wants. Does he carry some speed down towards the bottom of the track? Trying to move up ahead of Andrew Blaser of the USA. Oh, and Pinball Wizard passed us as the track goes uphill. That's not helping. This is his final heat of the World Championships, but I bet you we see him tomorrow. Ooh, squeezed ahead of Andrew Blaser by a couple of tenths there. Eric Bernotis. Yeah, he was one of the racers. He's one of the seven coaches here that was racing in 2008's Worlds. Yeah, he was right up there in World Cup rankings then. Yeah, one member of our jury was here as well in that race. Florian Grassel finished fourth for Germany, or Bavaria as he'd prefer to call it, I'm sure. Well, the nemesis we call the scorpion curve and watch his foot come over there boy yeah. i asked a couple of the athletes do you feel that you get hurt nah yeah. it's just part of it i'm looking going well that's why they oh, spend, you gotta be flexible that's why they spend hours stretching 
you'd be amazed at how much Bob Sen skeleton athletes stretch before their runs. Christopher Grote here, Alexander Gassner, Axel Jung lead in heat three in Altenburg. Final six sleds in the men's skeleton world championships. Heat three in Altenburg of four. Next up is Mattia Gaspari of Italy. His first few weeks back on ice after ripping his Achilles prior to Pyeongchang. He's had two years away from racing. He's barely able to run and hasn't been on an ice track of note for a couple of seasons, John. It's an uphill struggle. Martin, it's just great to see him back. Two years ago it was so sad, a month before the game. Games. He tore his Achilles, and he, you know he had he had an upper part of his Achilles that was the, they were trying to treat for about a month, and that was pretty well damaged. And then the lower one went in the racing. I think it was in Innsbruck. And uh, you know he's 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 got he's 26 years old. He's got vision towards Cortina Milan. Yeah. But Martin, he's he's pushing off the different side. It's like he's left-handed. He now has to learn how to throw right-handed. Yeah. You know it's got quite a challenge in front of him, but. Uh, not sure what the skeleton yeah. uh, equivalent of a switch hitter is, but he's it. He's it, and uh, Bodie's got a lot of uphill to retain the athleticism that he used to have. And Martin, he was a good athlete. He had yep. a top, five, top seven, eight start a couple years ago, and we wish him the best. Hope to see him more. Fourth World Championships for Mattia Gaspari. His Maybe we'll see him more on the team. Maybe. Uh, yeah, could do. They've got two Italian girls, so it's quite possible. And they're both good starters. Now, just to give you an indication of where he could be in a couple of years' time, he finished ninth in the Worlds in Koenigsegg in 2017, just prior to his injury. And in fact, after the Worlds, we were in the Hofbrau house having dinner, and he was in there with his girlfriend, full of the joys of life. He sent me a message a couple of weeks later, torn my Achilles. So, Mattia, great to have you back. It's not your year this year, but the road to recovery, as every athlete knows, can be a long one. There's some red jackets. Yeah, including a whole host of coaches. There's Jack Thomas with a sled for Chen Wenhao. Never raced in the World Cup yet, Chen. This is his World Championship debut, 23 years old. Started sliding in January 2016. Four years later, he's one of three Chinese athletes in the World Championships. Well, we have one Chinese athlete in the top 11, Yan. The Chinese women are doing pretty good. Yeah. There's a top 10 there. I dare say the women are going to win a medal at the Olympic Games. Well, the men have the potential to accelerate as well. They're all leaving here after. The, I think the bobsled team's already gone back, but I think that they're slide, going to slide on the track. Yeah. I don't know what the rule is for homologating it, but... Uh, well, the track's ready. I heard the track's yep. ready. Homologation will happen later in the year. And then it's at got the a prize of, a little like that, Mark. Yeah. And the next season, we'll have a World Cup race there. So everybody gets to see it. But the Chinese athletes, as of now, as you say, the bobsled team is already headed back. Skeleton team will as well. And they will get precious time on their own track. And he picks up a spot as well. 20th Squeeze best time of the run. He picks up three spots ahead of Kevin Boyer. So he's up to 24th place. Kevin Boyer behind him, Mattia Gaspari behind him, Andrew Blaser behind him. There you go. That's the way to have a third heat, to claw your way up the greasy pole. Good technique here for him. Climbing curve nine, maybe he gets up a little too high and then comes down, has to go back up on the out. Uh, he gets away with it, but Didn't that's he? a lot of too much steering there, Martin. And then, you know, you have to let the sled run. You don't want to try and create friction across the ice. On tracks he knows, he's very good indeed. He won, won the last three North America's Cup races on your home track in Lake Placid, John. So when we get to see him in North America, that could be a whole different ball game. Next up, Sebastian Inak of Romania, 28th after the first Another youngster. day's action. Yeah, one of two young Romanians who have slid in the World Cup this season. His teammate we will see potentially in the four-man race as a bobsledder this weekend. 5.14 get away for Sebastian. Well, he had 5.14 in the first run, 5.14 in the second run, 5.14 in the third run. He wins the most consistent award at the start. But I don't think he had any kind of consistency through 
four, five Scorpion at ben. all. All three heats, I think he had the yeah. same problem. Best World Cup race of the season, 16th place finish in Koenig's A. And teammate Mihai Pakyanyu training with the team again yesterday in the four-man training. Didn't start the World Championships in Skeleton. Now, that would have been a, a unique story. Yeah, to do both. Watch, to do watch both out disciplines. here. Got in there too late, and it's going to show here. He gets away with it. 24th speed. Is he going to claim a scalp here? Get ahead of Andrew Blas at the USA. At the line, he 27th fastest run. He's in 28th place. So he doesn't get to Blaser, but his World Championships is completed. He wins the award for having 5-14 start all three heats. Yeah. Most consistent, and Blaser's got our award for the most exciting exit of a curve. <laughs> he gets an 11 out of 10 I for excitement, doesn't in, he? In the truck, they've told us that the USA gets the most exciting uh, replays. Another debutante in the World Championships here, Romania's Sebastian Enak. Hey, he can play first ever. What's he, 20 years old? Yeah, 21. 21. Five junior world championships he's competed in already and the Youth Olympic Games. Okay, final three sleds in the penultimate run of the Men's Skeleton World Championships. Debutant Samuel Kaiser for Switzerland, whose teammate Marina Gilardoni How is the sensational that? leader Since of the women's race overnight. I'd like to know what's going through her mind right now. The Swiss have won a world championship since the Olympics in 2006, and in 2005 it was Maya Pedersen, Maya Berry originally. You go back and look, she medaled about four straight years as yeah. Maya Berry, then got married to Snora Pedersen from Norway and won the uh, world championships in Calgary in 05. She won the world, the Olympics in 06. Oh, big drama for Sammy so Kaiser. This will electrify the program in Switzerland because well, it's been a little and quiet course, in Switzerland since Maya Maya also tried to come back for the 2018 Olympic Games for Norway, her adopted country. Didn't quite make the cut. 29th speed at the line. And in or the prize for Sammy Kaiser. At the same time, there was a guy named Gregor Staly that was the world champion. Oh, yeah. 10 years apart. So this is great energy for Switzerland and Skeleton. Boy, tomorrow, two big heats. Well, hopefully, Sammy Kaiser and Basil Sieber, his teammate who comes up next, will be at trackside to support. Watch it. How would they not want to be? Yeah, yeah. why would you not? 59-12. So he comes down. That's his uh, least speedy run of the competition. More mistakes creeping in there, I'm afraid, on day two for Samuel Kaiser. But the 21-year-old World Championship rookie raced only once here, January 2019. Still needs lots of ice time experience, but he's got time and years on his side to avoid dramas like that. Four to five, Eva Pakans, former Canadian coach, now coaching the Swiss youngsters. So Gregor Staly won in 2002. 2001 2 overall the World Cup winners. 30th of 31 sliders in our field. Heat three of the men's skeleton world championships. Basil Sieber for Switzerland. Basil with start draw number 31 out of 32 yesterday. The 24-year-old, like his teammate in his first world championships. Raced here a couple of times in Europa Cup and in the Junior Worlds two or three seasons ago. So he's got a, a decent amount of knowledge of the track. I'm just looking back at the Swiss results. And Staly was you know, every, every, almost every year. He won the World Championships in 94. So, boy, big day for Switzerland tomorrow. Basil Sieber is three tenths of a second behind his teammate Sammy Kaiser. Trying to close the gap. At the moment, he is just overhauling him. So a battle between the two Swiss debutants. 28th best speed. It might be enough to get his teammate at the line. Where does he finish? 29th. So he is ahead of Sammy Kaiser. Yeah, picked him up by 1,500. Yeah, there you go. So wherever you are in the field, whether you're first and your two teammates are snapping at your heels or potentially your three teammates, or whether you're almost last and you're chasing down your teammate, there's always a battle. 
Well, the last Swiss guy to win the World Championships, Gregor Stalley in 2007. Yep. He also won in 94, 13 years apart. So the these two Swiss athletes are in the back of the field, but uh, they'll be very proud, potentially proud tomorrow. Yep. Well, Staley, the champion, 2007 in Sam Ritz, won in 2009. Lake Placid just beat the uh, longtime leader, Adam Pengilly, in the final heat to take the gold medal in the rain. And our final heat of the World Championships for the Italian Amadeo Bagnis, a World Cup debutante this season, a World Championship debutante here as well. And another of the new young Italians, just 20 years old, yeah. Good start. Not a bad start at all, 5.04 getaway. And again, short on ice time is his downfall. He hasn't raced here before, although he's two, done two junior worlds, they weren't here in Altenburg. He had his first ever skeleton race in November 2018. So he is getting to the end of his second season of this crazy headfirst sheet of ice racing business. An extreme sport with an Olympic theme is the way yep. I describe this sport. Well, if bobsledding is the champagne of winter sports, this is probably the shots of winter sports, isn't it? This is doing shots. And Medea Banias completes the third heat of the Men's Skeleton World Championships with a 27 fastest run, not quite enough to catch the Swiss guys in front of him. But a he's first... He's throwing down his first World Championships. Yep. End of the second year of sliding. He's in the national team representing Italy in the World Championships. He's raced in the World Cup. He's got speed and time. Tenth, tenth best start time, so yep. this kid's got some promise. The Italians program, they're starting to build it. You can see it with the ladies of great starts a couple of these italian guys have great starts they'll, they'll figure it out and they'll get their leader gaspari back healthy uh, he'll be fighting for his place before long matteo gaspari well there is amadeo banias he finishes out the third heat heading into our fourth and final run christopher grothair of germany has a seven hundredths of a second advantage. It's come down from nine hundredths over teammate Alexander Gassner, local hero Axel Jung, two tenths back. Martins do cause more than half a second out of the medals. Unless they really crank up the snow machine, he's got no chance. It will be between the three Germans to decide who is a first time world champion. Martin Stukors unlikely from three quarters of a second back to get a six world championship. None of the top three have had a world championship win and only Axel Jung has even had a world championship medal. In the 20, Nathan Crumpton, Gung Wing Chang, Austin Florian and the rest of them will join us trackside to see the fourth and final heat as the Skeleton Men World Championship medals are decided from 1,500 local, from 1,400 GMT. Join John Morgan and me, Martin Haven, to see which of our three athletes is going to produce a first ever World Championship win. We will be back in 50 minutes.